Hello and welcome back. In this tutorial I'm going to show you what I prefer to call the tilt shift photography effect. Uh, what a lot of people call the miniature effect though <clears throat> in Adobe Photoshop. And I'm going to go ahead and get started. The first thing that you need to do is open up your image in Adobe Photoshop. Try to pick a, a high quality image that has a lot of depth to it and a lot of elements to it. So once you create this miniature effect um, there will be a lot of affected elements. Okay, so open up your image in Adobe Photoshop and open up your layers palette. If you don't see your layers palette down at the uh, bottom right hand corner, go up to Window, down to Layers, and click on that. Or it looks like you can click F7 for a hotkey to open that up as well. Okay, now once you have your layers palette open, go ahead and make a copy of your background layer. You can do that by clicking and dragging that layer down into your new layer button, or you can press Ctrl J on your keyboard. That will also make a copy. Uh, but the reason that we do that is so that we can have an original copy of our our image just in case we make some kind of mistake where we need to start over um, we have a non-destructed original background image okay so I'll go ahead and click the visibility off on that image because we're not going to be really using it and um, it'll just kind of keep things a little more simple and I'm going to go ahead and rename this image from background copy to tilt shift the reason that I like uh, calling it the tilt shift effect is because it's an actual uh, photographic effect which we are just trying to achieve here in Adobe Photoshop. It's not really, the miniature effect isn't a real kind of term. Anyway, um, the next step here, now that you've made your new layer and you've renamed it, is you go into um, quick mask mode. You can do that on your tool palette by clicking this button over here. And now you're in quick mask mode. You can see up at the top it says quick mask and if uh, you click off of that you are out of quick mask mode. The other way to do it is to press Q on your keyboard that will also put you into quick mask mode. So in quick mask mode we will go ahead and select our gradient tool. If you see your paint bucket tool on your tool palette it's underneath of your paint bucket tool so what you'll do is you'll click and hold on your paint bucket tool and then uh, the gradient tool will pop up and go ahead and select the gradient tool. So you're in quick mask mode and you have your gradient tool uh, hold shift and make a selection of the area that you don't want uh, blurred, the, the most important part of your picture that you want to kind of maintain or um, show this effect on, the, uh, that you want to look miniaturized, okay? Now I can see that my selection, it's close but it's not exactly what I want, so I can press control Z and start over, or um, if you needed to, if you say you did this and you didn't like your selection <clears throat> and you went out of quick mask mode, um, you could just press Control D to remove your selection, press Q to go back into quick mask mode and start over. Okay? So in quick mask mode, with our gradient tool selected, I'm going to make a new selection and hopefully get a little bit better one this time. And you can kind of just keep making a selection until you like what you got. Now I like this selection, so I'm going to stick with that. Okay? Um, the red area is the area that's not going to be blurred with this next step, and the other areas will be, because they're actually the areas that are selected. So if I press Q, you can see that this top area and this bottom area are actually selected with, uh, with my, uh, my selection. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do, though, is we go up to Filter, down to Blur, and we're going to throw a Lens Blur on there, so uh, click Lens Blur. And you can see uh, how much your lens blur is going to affect your image in this preview here. Okay, I have my, the biggest thing that you need to worry about is the radius. I have my radius set up to about 45. Um, and I think I'm going to go ahead and leave it there just because um, the more blur, the more effect this, uh, the more... Um, intense this effect will be on your image. So I'm going to leave it like that. You can certainly play with the rest of these. Um, maybe I should add a little noise to this image actually. And, uh, I think I'm not going to do that. Okay. So I'll leave it with the, uh, the radius at 45. Go ahead and play around with the other settings, but I'm going to go ahead and press OK and apply that to my image. Okay. And then I'll press Control D to remove my selection. As you can see, since we had, uh, we used a gradient to make our selection, it's a little bit less blurred towards the edge here and a little bit more blurred towards the edge here and that's the gradient that you're getting with your uh, your selection okay 
uh, just for a little explanation. The next thing that I want to do, and we're just about done, is I'm going to add an adjustment layer above um, all my other layers. Well, just this one layer, really. But I'll go and click on my adjustment layer button, and I'm going to add a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And I'm just going to take that saturation slider and drag it up about halfway. I'm going to drag it to about uh, 40 is a bit high. Let's do about 30. Uh, I have 32 to be exact. And I'm going to leave it right there. Okay. And then the last thing that I want to do is I'm going to add another adjustment layer. And it's going to be a curves adjustment layer. And I'm going to click once in the middle of my uh, adjustment layer. Um, or in the middle of my, my curves uh, kind of control panel here. And uh, I'll put one point in the middle, one point at the top, and one point down at the bottom. And what I want to do is I want to drag this point up at the top up and to the right a little bit and the one at the bottom down to the left a little bit. And that's just going to increase my highlights and my lowlights and my image and just intensify this effect even a little bit more. And as you can see uh, in our image right now, we are done. We have achieved our miniature effect. You can see the area that's not blurred looks uh, very miniaturized, okay? And I can just show you what we started with with this image and that's not very miniature looking and we end with this very miniaturized and uh, intensified lighting okay so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial please find me on facebook and twitter and uh, have a great day thank you